Hi, I'm Holly, and welcome to Project Strange. Lots of questions surround the structures in our world, like who made them, how they made them, and why they made them. And Project Strange is our attempt to find these answers through understanding structural engineering. In this episode, we're trying to understand Hooke's Law. But first, let's talk about history. The spring is one of the foundational elements of all engineering. Spring. Garden chairs, pendulum clocks, wind-up toys, mouse traps. There are thousands of inventions that would be impossible without it. But in order for the spring to have catapulted engineering into the next stratosphere, first you have to understand the laws of elasticity, torsion, and force, also known as Hooke's Law. This principle of physics states that the force needed to extend or compress a spring by some distance is proportional to that distance. This law is named after 17th century British physicist Robert Hooke, who sought out to demonstrate the relationship between the forces applied to a spring and its elasticity. One day I hope to have my own law named after me too. <laughs> no! No! Did you know a diving board is a great example of deflection? During diving competitions in the early 20th century, each country competing had their own design of diving boards. Traveling competitors would have to get used to the host diving boards or bring their own. Talk about baggage. These boards, however, were made of aluminum. Imagine burning your little toes on one of those on a hot summer's day. Youch! In 1960, the Duraflex board was introduced at the Rome Olympics and has been their standard diving board for over 60 years. The Duraflex boards are better equipped to handle the stress from the diver. Anyways, along with our beloved springs, it is also applied to anything that changes shape when elasticity is involved. But Hooke's Law only works within a limited frame of reference because no material can be compressed beyond a certain minimum size. AKA, if you blow up a balloon too big, it'll eventually pop and just deform completely. I guess we've all got our limits. And now I'll pass it off to Peyton with the interview. So, what is deflection? Let's think of deflection as a fancy type of displacement. And what displacement is, is just, it's pretty much just the movement of a certain object from one point to another. What deflection is, is you're taking that concept and you're just making it specialized to a specific point on a structural member. And this deflection is based on different conditions. So let's say we're looking at this ruler and I'm gonna use my hand to hold it down at a specific location. So let's say at this point we have four inches off the table. And if I apply weight to the end of this ruler, we're gonna see it deflect. Not break luckily, but we see it deflect. Not bad. This is a 500 gram weight and it causes this much deflection in the ruler. This is called a deflection because this point is moving, but where my hand is fixed, there is no movement at all. So that's the main concept of what deflection is. It's how much displacement is occurring at a specific point on a structural member. What we have are called tangents, right? So if we consider this point that's flat against the table, the tangent's gonna be parallel with where this is being supported. So this whole section is gonna have a tangent or a slope of zero. If we're looking at a point with respect to the end where the force is being applied, mm -hmm. we actually have a tangent that's following that deflected shape. And it's not zero? So that's not zero. Okay. A little bit bigger and with some uh, fancy calculations, you can go ahead and find it. The number is higher with higher loads, all right? So let's talk about a concept of why deflection is important. If we look at this ruler, right? We saw that when it was four inches off the table, we actually had like a pretty severe deflection. But if you did the same thing, and let's say you took three rulers this time and you had the same span off the side of the table and you tried to put the same weight through it, it's not gonna deflect as much. And the reason for that is just cause you, you have a thicker member now. Bruh. The more material that you generally have for a section is gonna provide you with more resistance to that deflection at a specific point. Another important point about deflection is, for example, we have a configuration where we have one end fixed, right? So what we call that in engineering is a cantilever. And the further that span goes out, the more severe the deflection is gonna be. And the most critical point for that deflection is gonna be right at the end because that's the furthest it deflects from its original position. The material is super important. And when we look at the material, we have something called the modulus of elasticity, which is something fancy just to relate the stress to the strain. But in simpler terms, what it means is how resistant your material is gonna be to a stress applied. So if I apply the force to this ruler, it's gonna deflect a certain amount. But if I applied that force to a piece of uh, uh, spaghetti, oh yeah, it's gonna deflect and fall on the floor. Then we look at the inertia or the moment of inertia, which is the stacking of the rulers, right? With the three rulers now, we have a larger moment of inertia, which in simple terms means it's resistance to bending. And the more material you have spread from the axis that's bending about, the more resistance you're gonna have to that initial deflection. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, not bad. 
So in terms of everyday life, how do we use deflection? Uh, in everyday life, how do we use deflection? Let's imagine we're gonna jump off a diving board since we already have the ruler example. The further out we jump on this diving board, we're gonna have a much higher bounce off it. That's why you don't really see people jumping towards the end over here. We tend to see deflection in the engineering world as something that needs to be checked in all structural analysis. However, a day-to-day -day person is not going to go around and see deflection at all. It's not visible to the naked eye unless there's, let's say, a super tall and slender structure, maybe like a flagpole or like a light pole that you see uh, out in traffic. Mm -hmm. And when you have a really windy day, you'll see the sway in the movement of that traffic signal. And pretty much everything needs to have a certain amount of allowance for that deflection, or else it would be so rigid that any type of movement or uh, loading applied to it mm -hmm. is gonna create such a concentrated stress in that member that it's just gonna totally destroy it. So how do you use deflection in structural engineering? In structural engineering, you have to think about how deflection is gonna play a role in your structure. So let's say we had a simple house, right? We're standing on the floor and we have two columns that are supporting a beam that goes across for that floor assembly. That beam can only deflect so much until it becomes a risk. So we need to check and make sure prior to anything gets constructed that this deflection is gonna meet the requirements that are stated in a bunch of fancy special codes that these regulations put out and these are almost laws that we need to follow to ensure that every, everybody in the public is going to be safe for our construction. And this goes for all structural engineers in general, right? That's our main goal, just to make sure everything's safe. And that's just another check that we got to do. And why did you want to be an engineer? So I'm not artistic at all, but I realized pretty early on that I was decent at math. I wouldn't say I'm the greatest. As long as you get a little bit of confidence with the numbers, then, you know, you, you start thinking about, you know, maybe I can... Maybe I can apply this skill to uh, something in the future so that I can make a little bit of money off of it, you know, and have a passion about it too, right? So basically, in structural engineering, deflection is the degree to which a part of a structural element is displaced under a load because it deforms. It may refer to an angle or a distance. The equation governing the bean's deflection, W, can be approximated as where the second derivative of its deflected shape with respect to x is interpreted as its curvature. E is the Young's modulus. I is the area moment of inertia in the cross section. And M is the internal bending moment in the beam. Does your brain feel bigger after this? I know mine does. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button on the way out. And as always, enjoy the process. Everybody has potential. Everybody has potential. You know, I could... I like could, potential to be like an engineer. Potential would be whatever you want. I could be a TikTok star, maybe. You never know. You but, should try. Um, You've got the hair for it. I appreciate it. I, I try. I try my best. Mm -hmm.